Okay, we are live episode 85 for one of my favorite. We haven't even done it yet. I just know it's going to be one of my favorite episodes. Barry Turner, Lenny and Larry, Val Madamba, Food Wit. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Hi, Val. Barry, we're rocking. It's this company we've heard of. It's been around for a long time. I know it. I want to say as, as well as you, okay? But yeah. I, I know that's not true. <laughs> Give us the story, and I want to know when did it start? Started uh, 1993, uh, September 18th, uh, just having a cup of coffee. Uh, just got injured on the uh, awesome television show called American Gladiators. That was my claim to fame. I was Cyclone. And uh, just decided to put protein into baked goods. It's, it's that simple. Protein into baked goods, Cyclone. Look it up, folks. Okay, let's let's go right into this. Uh, how did you transition into that? What was the first thing you did in '93 to make that come to fruition? Uh, literally, uh, the day we started, we uh, we ran out the day we drew the logo on a napkin. True story. And we ran out that day and bought uh, muffin mix and protein powder. And we got a DBA at the time called a doing business as here in California. We opened up a bank account with $1,400 because I think every business starts with $1,400 because uh, that's all the money we had. And uh, we just said, hey, we're going to go do this. We're going to put protein in the baked goods and we're going to create a, a crazy little uh, brand. Give us the first 12 months. If you were literally to jump into the 12th month of the business, what exactly did it look like and who was involved? It was literally just me and my partner, Benny, Benny Graham, and we were the Lenny and Larry's. And um, we, Mark, it was crazy because it was, it was pre-internet. I know it really dates me. I know I'm an old dude, but uh, it, man, it's like we, we just, we struggled in terms of like just, you know, growing the brand quickly and uh, we just knocked on doors. We did it the old fashioned way organically and uh, pick up the phone, call people and everyone kept saying yes, but they kept saying it kind of confused, like, uh, hey, we're gonna give us a try. We don't really understand it, but we're gonna give it a try. Were there other items like this in the market? I mean, we're, we're gonna fast forward yeah. later in this, but, but like, give us the, the, the preview. What did a grocery store, what did a nutrition supplement store look like? There was the GNC, around back then yeah. what what did it look like in the category honestly there was nothing in terms of what we're doing there was there were protein bars there were protein powders uh metrics was big even back in my uh my bodybuilding days my gladiator days uh metrics used to send me a lot of free product and and i would take it just because it was protein and but i wanted something that tasted good benny and i both did and we just said let's just make things for ourselves and it was it was just hard we were creating a category and you don't know that at the time and, uh, but uh, it was just like, say, people just were in, they were just, uh, you know, like, you know, saying, hey, this could be something, let's, let's give it a shot. But the only thing we were competing against was metrics. There was a bar out there called Iron Bar, I think it was, or something like Steel Bar or something. And then Cliff Bar had launched the same time we launched. So that was it. That was kind of the landscape. It, it's so interesting. And, and then also, um, maybe was there, was Power Bar kind of in play at, at the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's another good one, too. They started in like 87, I think it was. And they were just, they were in the energy bar. So kind of different, like Cliff Bar was trying to be a better Power Bar. We weren't trying to be anything other than what we were, which was high protein baked goods, right? It. It's fun. Uh, this yeah. is fun. Again, as somebody who's a health and wellness enthusiast, I love this story. I like where we're going to go with this. And yeah. then also I like just thinking back uh, to those days. Again, Power Bar. Remember yeah. Power Bar, everybody? It was that chewy thing. Like talk about first to market, first category, in, like true innovation. And now I'm going to, we're going to do some yeah. q and because I think it's funny. I'm, I'm vocal about this. You know, like the term innovation. Yep. It's real. like, now I'm going to go to you, somebody who's been in this space, who's had success way more than, than all of us. I, and I'm just being, I'm going to, sorry, I have to do it. I'm going to make okay. you feel uncomfortable okay. here. Okay. What do you think now? I'm not going to go all the way fast forward, but I want to just do kind of Q&A. What does innovation mean to you now versus what you were a part of when you see that thrown around in places? 
Mark, such a good freaking question. Um, back then, I've, I've said before, it's like if I knew then what I know now, I would have focused on a winner and found what my winner was. We were making everything without having a without having the distribution for it. So although we made we started with a muffin, the first couple of weeks, all of a sudden we're working on brownies and cookies. Mark, we were doing high protein popcorn and high protein granola and high protein cinnamon rolls, everything. And we just, and we had nowhere to sell the products. So it's like, it just, so to me, innovation today is like taking your, your winners that are out there and putting them into say a, a different form or a different flavor or a different size. But back then we were just doing just a bunch of different hodgepodge products. That's interesting, really interesting. And it's, it's fun to listen to that because even just a few of those items that you mentioned, you know, 25 years or whatever it is now later, they kind of come back to market and you see some that do or don't make it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, for a number of reasons. Sometimes it really is just taste and texture. Sometimes it's just not great for the brand and its market fit, right? That yeah, specific yeah. consumer. So um, let's now talk about the difference in, in building a business, from where you started and what you were doing with 1400 bucks compared to now, give us what those look like to you, somebody who's been and seen and been a part of both. Yeah, I think, uh, I think because we didn't know, we, we didn't know what we didn't know. And so I think the uh, only thing we knew was just hustle and determination and perseverance and we were going to succeed regardless, right? But so if you fast forward to today, and, uh, and I know you may have spoken on it before, or made comments about it before, and I agree with you. I just, I, I find it odd that we celebrate people who raise a bunch of money to start a business. I, that, that's just, a, to me, it's just a big pet peeve of mine. I, I think it's so easy to spend other people's money. And I don't think you have any relationship to that money. And then the person or fund that's investing in you, it's not their money. They have no relationship to that money. So I think it's uh, when it's when it's hard work, like we've sold our car, or we we've mortgaged our home, or we we've done, or we we live in a one bedroom apartment with four people, or whatever it may be, to sacrifice and put our own money and our own blood, sweat, and tears into it. It means more to us, and I think we're smarter with it. It's not being cheap; it's just being frugal and being smart with your money. And uh, I, I just don't like the celebrating of uh, people doing the raises uh, of uh, of this of capital. I just don't. So. <laughs> That's my rewind. Uh, I, I make up sounds on here. Um, there's Love like it. 45 seconds there that are important. And it's, I know it's important to hear from a lot of people who sit where, where I am, right? The men and women who are operating and, and, and they're at a founding position uh, and they're part of these great teams because there is that other side. I'd actually say that probably a majority of people like to listen to commentary like that. And they like to hear it as, um, as something that they feel the same about. And I know I can speak for you here. It's not to say there's anything wrong with the raise and the, the method of developing a business today, which is you go out there and you are, you know, in that big A round, B round. And, oh, yeah. We get it. I, I get it. I know you, you know, we get it. Um, but there isn't enough discussion, talk about what you just did. And so I do. I want to talk more about it. Yeah. Um, and I know you're, and I, I knew, we've talked offline about it. So, so good. I like that. What, uh, what does the business look like, I just for fun, at its peak? Um, I, it, it may be peaking now, but meaning like in the middle of that, what did it look like? Um, it was, I guess like in any, any um, startup or entrepreneur brand or whatever, there's obviously there's chaos, but, but in all that chaos, that's the, when, when you have an exit, guys, it's, a, it's one of the first things you miss is all the putting out the fires and things. That's the stuff that you miss. I was just with the, 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 the gang from Midday Squares last week, and I told them that. They were talking about things that they're going through, and I was just like, man, just embrace this. This, this is the stuff you're going to miss if you sell your company one day. Um, I, I think when you're growing a brand, too, or a business, uh, I don't, if you, if you, the one other thing I'll say, Mark, is, is I tell everyone, stop focusing on the exit. Just stop. You're building a business here, guys. You're not building, you, your brand will become a brand, hopefully, but what you're building is a business to try to build a, a sustainable, profitable business. But Mark, we caught fire, even though it's a 25 plus year overnight success. 
we caught fire. We grew incrementally. We grew like an IBM stock, right? We were just, it just, you know, 30, 40% a year. We just grew, grew, grew. But guess what? We always made money. We never had debt and we didn't have investors. So, so we were happy growing like that and knowing we were building such a foundation that we knew we would be here. We'd be a legacy brand. And that's, that's another thing people miss. They, they're so there's, they want to go so quickly instead of like building and saying, no, I'm building something here you know, own your territory, that kind of thing. And a lot of people just miss that. And they just think like, I'm gonna throw spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks. And that's where we're heading. What year was that when you did get acquired, at least in what I'd consider to be the the, the first real acquisition? Yeah. Uh, The uh, first time we sold, uh, sold in 2001. And um, so I had like a six and a half year hiatus and uh, did some crazy things uh, in terms of real estate, mortgages. And I even ran a software company. and, um, And a lot of people don't know this. Um, I, I'm partly responsible for Quest Nutrition existing because I worked with those guys in the software. They had a software company and I was the president of their software company. So if you look at my LinkedIn profile, I have two things on there. Lenny Larry's president of awareness technologies. And so I went back to Lenny and Larry's while working with these guys. And so they, uh, and one thing I did learn is, is how to market a brand online through them. And um, so I decided I was going to go back in. They wanted to maybe invest in Lenny and Larry. So we spent a couple of years going back and forth. Well, they just decided to do their own brand. So very cool, very sharp guys. And they, and they knocked it out of the park, right? But as one of my good friends tells me, Michael Benny, he said, I'm more impressed with what you did. He calls me BT. He said, because you did it almost solo. And so I started this, I rescued this. And although I did have partners along the way, the one constant in, in all this success was, I'm going to do this, me. I was the one driving this train all the time. I never stopped thinking about my brand. And so a six and a half year hiatus, I jumped back in. I rescued this in 2007. And that's when I proclaimed, okay, now it's time to, to turn Lenny and Larry's into a brand. And um, so now the world had kind of caught up to what we were doing. Protein was in the forefront. Finally, after I said it in 1993, it was going to be the biggest ingredient to ever to, to change the world. And, um, and, you know, eventually you become, uh, uh, it becomes true. So, um, so yeah, it's just, just a little, just a little brief story there. I like that. Uh, yes. And, and you, those, there's not many that actually know that story. I, I do because yep. I was kind of in the, again, in health and wellness space, you know, walking the Olympias and the like, yep. right. You, you'd heard like, well, what was that all about? And, you know, and then everybody kind of makes up their own story, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, and then, uh, you know, I knew that story. So, um, it, it's an, it's a unique one. Mm-hmm. And, I kind of want to bring it back to the brand stuff and, and acquisition or not acquisition. What a lot of people don't realize unless they just actually were being honest with themselves is there's not many companies that get acquired. Yeah. yeah. As we're ta- if we, let's just talk food and beverage. Cause that's what we're all. There's yeah. not that many. No. You don't hear, you hear about raises and blah, blah, blah. And everybody's fluff and all this. I did this and, there are not many companies that that actually exit. And then yeah. the others that maybe raised enough money where I don't know, founders are taking money off the table and then they yeah, think sure. that that's some they think that that's some sort of success story. More power to them. I'm just saying. Yeah. There yeah. are not the ultimate perfect bar. I'm using them, I'm actually just oh, a oh, fan. Yeah, yeah. Stories, right? Yeah. There, yeah. there aren't. And so if you do what Barry's talking about, which is knock it off, if you didn't get into this because you wanted to build a platform and, and have a company that's forever, that's, you almost have to be, that's going to be forever. Yeah. You're in a world of hurt yep. because this business is tough as, and I did my own bleep there because then I don't have to do uh, <laughs> Um, and so anyway, I'm with you, yeah. Barry, and I know you say that from the heart and yeah. it, it's, it's because you, you did it and you have a, what I consider to be a legacy brand because it, it will be here, whether you're, you know, you're doing in 10 years or whatever yeah. it may be, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and Mark, the, the, that's a great point. And then when you fast forward say, okay, I sold, had the first exit in 2001 and it was a good win. Don't get me wrong. I was able to to do some things with that, I bought real estate, so I so I was buying, uh, you know, investing in appreciating assets, and so I'm a big real estate guy, and um, so. But when I came back, and then we built it up, and then I had another ten years, ten year run at this, 
and then we then we had a really successful exit on June 1st of 2017 and uh, always do the air fingers quote liquidity event um, and um, just uh, what what's in layman's terms we made a lot of money okay let's just let's don't let's don't be let be shy about it it's just the truth busted my ass uh, you know sacrificed a lot and or and so it was it was well rewarded but on June 1st 2017 when you get the confirmation and all of a sudden you look at your account and your Merrill Lynch person has said, yep, there it is. There's the wire. And you take a screenshot of it on your phone and you look at it and then you realize for some reason you're not happy. And um, so June 1st of 2017 was in, in my business life cycle was one of the worst days of my life. I sold my company. And, um, and so I missed it. And um, Money, if, if you're a grounded person, if you deep in your soul, you're just a grounded person and you, you value, you know, your relationships and family and, and, and whatever, and just working hard or whatever, money can't change you. I live in the same house I lived in in 2017. You know, I've been living in this house for 10, 12 years now. Uh, I drove the same car until recently. I, I sold my car because I wasn't driving my car. I was like, this is stupid to have a car. So, um, so money didn't change me. It just... Um, uh, and I didn't like it. I didn't, I didn't like selling my company again. I feel like I gave my, I feel like I gave my baby away again. And uh, so. there's, we could do this for, and we will, cause we're going to do a follow-up to this. Cause then I'm going to, we're okay. going to dive deeper, but I just, okay. in closing, what are you do? Are you involved right now with the company? Yeah. If so, what does it look like in short? Yeah. If not. Good. Yeah. Think? It's good. The uh, so I, I had to sign a four-year non-compete. Uh, the first couple of years, uh, it was important for them to uh, do the deal to make sure that they locked me up, and so they locked me up for a couple of years, and um, and then it was I think it was important for them to continue to lock me up for another two years, and so I'm about 40, 49 days away from my non-compete ending, and um, and it could be a great day, uh, could be just another day. And uh, not that I'm rushing to start out, you know, start a new, new Lenny and Larry's and call it Benny and Barry's or anything like that. But, <laughs> but who knows? Who knows? Right. Um, no, but, it, but Mark, it's also it's hard to get um, it's uh, it's hard to get lightning to strike twice. And uh, most people never tell you that either. People who've had their uh, successes, they want to stand on top of a mountain and say, look at me, I'm a serial entrepreneur and I can do it again or whatever. Chances of you doing it again and again and again are very, very rare. Just like you said, the chances of getting your company acquired, is, it's just it's just very rare. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm involved in just on the, uh, the R and D and innovation side, but full disclosure, uh, they don't listen very well. And, um, so, uh, that's the, that's the frustrating part too. Once you turn over, once you give the keys to somebody and they're going to drive your car and they're going to drive it differently than you. Um, yeah, that, that's the hardest part of this of selling your company and staying involved. So one thing I'll tell people out there, all these entrepreneurs who may sell their company, don't retain equity in your, your company sell your company, just sell it and walk away from it. You cannot hang on guys. It's the, it's torture. They will never do what you think they should do. And the most of the times when they buy your company, one thing I've been called is I've been called honest. So I'm going to be honest here. So when these private equity or whomever, like they acquire your company, they bring in corporate type people because they want to, they want to professionalize your management. That was the term that they used. Um, so us huckleberries out there, you know, the entrepreneurs who just do what we can to, to make it, we're not qualified enough, again, air fingers quote, uh, because we don't have the pedigree or the background, the resume. But one thing we have is we're smarter than all of them because we're the ones that created the value in something that these people are investing their money in. So we are at the top of the pile here, the, the top of the heap. So. I love that. There's, there's a lot of gems in there. Uh, From start to finish, yep. uh, we're going to do a follow-up. I appreciate it, Barry. Really yep. good stuff. All right, buddy. Val, let's do this. Food wit, what is it all about? Well, first of all, thank you so much, Mark, for um, letting me hang with you guys. It's a ridiculously tough act to follow. But but yes, food wit um, is the firm that I'm with. We are a regulatory and food safety managed services firm. So Essentially, we help food brands with compliance, reducing risk throughout the product life cycle, right? So as, um, which is something I know you guys are intimately familiar with um, where you're coming from. So development to launch, getting your labeling and marketing and claims compliance right, um, setting up safety and quality programs um, with commands and, and suppliers and helping, you know, post-launch as well. So, you know, helping with managing complaints and investigating issues, 
recalls, audits, working with the FDA and all of that. Um, we've helped launch thousands of products over the years. And we also work with a number of our clients as a completely outsourced um, regulatory and quality team. So they are mostly our clients in CPG, e-commerce, um, ingredient manufacturers as well, and quick service restaurants. Um, so, you know, what I really love about our team, what I think makes us really special is that, you know, we're all regulatory practitioners and experts, but we've all been inside big food companies before. So um, we've also got a lot of background in startups. So, you know, we, we get it. We do regulatory, but we've been in the trenches inside food businesses as well. So um, we're really sensitive to, you know, balancing compliance with kind of practical operational realities. And we are food scientists, nutritionists, um, quality professionals. Um, I'm actually one of the non-scientists, um, but I'm a former food lawyer at the FDA. So try to add value from that lens. Um, yeah, so again, we, we're just really focused on helping our clients do the right thing, um, which is what they all wanna do, right? Make safe, great and high quality products for customers. Um, it's just not always super clear exactly what that requires, uh, especially when you're, you know, doing something innovative that might fall into one of these gray areas. And that's where we, we love to support and where we really shine. So we just love to kind of demystify compliance and free up our clients to, to refocus on what they love to do and get their products out into the world. You need to get your business in order, folks. Hit up Val, Okay. We all know what that looks like. Uh, good stuff, Val, Barry. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your week. Talk soon.